I have no wish to stand for long between Professor John Milner and ourselves. I'll say a few words just to start the proceedings. Uh, there is uh, no need to tell you about Nash equilibrium, which is the uh, most well-known concept in game theory and has had impact in many fields ranging from biology to computer science, which is the focus of this conference, to uh, economics, industrial organization, law, politics, and so on. But, but even though you know all about Nash equilibrium, I'd still like to project one slide. Uh, can you do the next one? Ah, uh, here. Okay. Oh, it's here. Okay. So uh, this is the paper published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Science in 1950, uh, where, which first mentions uh, equilibrium points. And as you can see, it's one page long. In the first paragraph, the first two paragraphs, a strategic game and equilibrium point is defined. In, spelled out in clear English with one symbol, N, for the number of players. In the third paragraph and the fourth paragraph, also in plain English, the proof of the existence of equilibrium is given. Uh, the only symbols that are used over there are to define what it means for a set to be closed. Yes, in this case, the set is the graph of the best reply correspondence. Uh, John Nash did not use the word best reply, he used the word countering, which is equally expressive, and so he called an equilibrium. Equilibrium was described as a self-countering choice of strategies. Uh, but everything that's new is all in English, and it's, uh, as, I don't know if you, how many of you have seen this. So one day I did ask him, why he bothered to write the symbols. He could have just said that it's a closed set. And John Nash uh, smiled slightly and he said, I was, after all, submitting a paper to a math journal, so I thought it would not be inappropriate to put in some symbols. Uh -huh. uh, of course, he wrote a variant of this in which instead of deviating to best replies, players deviated more gently to a better reply in a continuous manner, and then instead of Kakutani's theorem, which he uses here, for which he thanks David Gale, uh, uh, could, could be replaced by the use of Brouwer's theorem. But that map already had in it a notion of learning, and that led to a literature on learning, which uh, Sergio Hart can tell us about but not now, <laughs> in, the, in the reception. Uh, John Nash also published, and this was 1950, the Brouwer fixed point was 1951 in the Annals of Mathematics. Then in 1950 he also published another paper, which we all know, the bargaining problem, in which he developed a cooperative solution from an axiomatic point of view. Uh, and in 53, he published a second page, uh, uh, the, the bargaining problem was in Econometrica, 53 was another publication in Econometrica called Two-Person Cooperative Games, where he developed a non-cooperative approach to the bargaining problem, and he, so he defined what is now known as a demand game, observed that it has too many, a continuum of equilibria, and, and he said to get rid of this, uh, 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 non-uniqueness, he developed the uh, an equilibrium refinement. He introduced uncertainty of the payoffs, which, which, va which were to vanish slowly, and showed that the only equilibrium which survived the perturbation was the Nash bargaining solution. So even the idea of refinement of equilibria, which was developed by many others, including Harsanyi and Zeltin, who shared with him the Nobel Prize in 1994, uh, there's the germ of it in Nash's 53 paper. Uh, 
like so many others here, I met John Nash frequently at Stony Brook. He was a member of our Center for Game Theory and uh, came here regularly for the summer conferences. But I first met him in 1995 in Jerusalem at a conference. Uh, I think it might have been the first conference he was attending after his Nobel Prize. And the first words he spoke to me was, uh, where's Lloyd? Lloyd Shapley was not there, but Lloyd had maintained contact with John Nash over the years and greatly respected him. In fact, Lloyd Shapley was on the committee that awarded John Nash the von Neumann Prize in Operations Research. And later, when the Nobel Prize was announced for John Nash in 94, the New York Times called Lloyd. And now I'm just quoting Lloyd. When Lloyd said to them uh, about John Nash, he was a prankster, but he had a clean, beautiful mind. This was reported the next day in the following words. He was obnoxious, but he had a clean, beautiful mind. They did not tamper with the phrase, a beautiful mind, which went on to become the title of a book and also a movie. I don't know about the book, but as for the movie, uh, John and Alicia said that they enjoyed very much the time that they spent with Russell Crowe and uh, Jennifer Connelly. But John added that they were relieved to see the movie because it had so little to do with their lives that they felt their privacy was not invaded. <laughs> uh, anyway, the movie was not uh, claiming, uh, unlike New York Times, to be reporting the truth. Uh, my my uh, last conversation with John Nash was uh, just after he had got, uh, the, the Abel Prize had been announced. In fact, I learned about it through a phone call from Ibrahim. And so I called him, and uh, there was a machine, a, a message taped by John Nash. It said, today is a very busy day, uh, but the machine will be able to take messages. So I left a message saying that I was joining the long queue of people to congratulate him. And then he called back the next day. Uh, and mainly it was to discuss his forthcoming trip to Jerusalem and also later here to Stony Brook. He was looking forward to both. Uh, but at some point I couldn't help myself as I said to John Nash that I have a feeling that you might find the Abel Prize much more precious than the Nobel Prize. And there was silence and slowly John Nash said, yes, half is more than one third. <laughs> so now it's, it's, uh, we are delighted that uh, Professor John Milner is here uh, to speak about John Nash and what the half was about. I've told you a little bit about the one third. Uh, John, John Milner needs no introduction. He, uh, among many awards and honors, he's been the recipient of the Fields Medal, the Wolf Prize, and the Abel Prize. And only three other mathematicians have got these three. So let me not hold, uh, hold this up, Professor Miller. <laughs>